When I tell people I'm a food scientist, I'm usually met with surprise or confusion. Surprise because many people I talk to didn't even know being a food scientist was an option or that they could study food science. And confused because oftentimes people say, oh, so you're a nutritionist or a dietitian or a chef. And of course, all of those work with food as do I, but they're very different from being a food scientist. So what's food science? That's what I want to talk about today. Food science, simply put, is the study of how you take these raw materials from the field or the farm and transform them into safe, affordable food products. So food science is really a combination of many other sciences and this is what drew me to food science in the first place is that it's really a little bit of chemistry and biochemistry, but also biology and microbiology, physics, engineering. And so you learn all these concepts or theories, but applied to food, which is super interesting material to learn. So on a daily basis, what are some things a food scientist might be tasked with? Well, it could be anything from first harvesting the foods because we have uh, such a large food system. This is a massive scale we're talking about. So you have to think logistically, how are we gonna get that harvest food now into the processing plant? Once it's in the plant, a lot of food scientists work with how do we preserve this food? We have to make sure the food is safe for its entire shelf life. We might have to do different processes to the food. We might have to heat it. We might have to dry it or freeze it. And then once you sort of have that end food product, you think about what's the correct packaging or how should we best package this food to protect it? And finally, you have to think about how are you gonna distribute all these foods to grocery stores or restaurants or other food services. Now, even after that definition, I think, you know, food science might still seem a little abstract, especially if you've really never heard of it before. So I have a couple of examples. That's why I have all this food here to show you how a food scientist might see these products a bit differently than the average person. And hopefully that sort of helps with what a food scientist does. So let me grab my first example. So you may have seen this in stores or Starbucks. This is UHT milk, ultra high temperature processing milk. And you might have noticed this can sit out at room temperature where most of our milk is actually in the refrigerator. And this is only because of that new process, UHT, that this milk is safe at room temperature that no yeast bacteria or mold grow that could make us sick. And so because of this new process, that a food scientist might have come up with or some science scientist, we can have milk that's safe at room temperature. And like I said, safe food is the number one girl goal, the number one priority easily. You always have to make safe food. And so that's a good example of processing and food safety because milk can grow a lot of nasty bacteria. Another good example is Skittles. Everyone loves a good candy project. So Skittles, this is the original flavors, the red package, but think about how many other types of flavors or packages of Skittles there are. And a food scientist often works with, are there new flavors? What new colors should we use? So that would be something like a project to do with Skittles. And Skittles is also a good example of crystallization. So you have to control is your sugar in a sugar syrup form? Is it in a liquid form? Or is it crystallizing into a solid form? So crystallization and how to control it is really important for Skittles. Here's um, another confectionery uh, product. So this is a chocolate bar, but as you can see, it has a huge defect and that's called chocolate bloom. This grayish white surface is known as chocolate bloom. And obviously if you're making, you know, tons and tons of chocolate each day, you can't have it all be this discolored surface. And luckily chocolate bloom is safe to eat, but we eat with our eyes and people don't like this appearance. And so if you worked for a chocolate company, you would have to think, how can I prevent chocolate bloom? Which means you first need to understand what it is. And I just did a video on this, so go watch it. 
So what's chocolate bloom and how can I prevent it? Because we don't want this happening to our chocolate products. So really interesting confectionery um, chocolate and Skittles. People love to do um, confectionery science. I actually took a whole class on confectionery science in undergrad. So our next example, this is peanut butter, but this is just the original Jif brand. But you may have noticed this looks different than those natural peanut butters that tend to have that oil layer on top. Natural peanut butters tend to separate. And this has to do with how the foods were formulated or what ingredients were added to make this peanut butter. So the original brands like Jif or Skippy, the original, um, they have an ingredient called emulsifiers, which help keep the oil in that peanut butter, whereas the natural versions don't usually have these emulsifiers, and so the oil more easily separates out. So another big task for food scientists is to figure out what ingredients to include, and each ingredient needs to play a very specific role or have a specific function. One of my favorite topics is food structure. And so this is a salad dressing, but when I look at this product, what comes to my brain is that this is actually an emulsion, meaning that if we could zoom in, if we had a microscope or something, and we could zoom into this salad dressing, we would see really tiny oil droplets suspended in this watery phase. And the problem with that is, of course, oil and water don't like each other. They don't like to mix, which means you need to formulate this food. You need to add some ingredients to keep those oil droplets suspended in the water. Let me grab these up here. So um, I know a couple people that have gone in more into food packaging. So figuring out, well, we have these Oreo cookies how do we protect these as they're being distributed and handled in the grocery store so that they're not all crumbled by the time the consumer gets to them? And so you might know they have this plastic tray inside that helps protect the cookies. These also recently got these resealable um, packaging, which is really convenient for the consumer. It's way nicer than having to open it on the end and slide them in and out. Um, I noticed the red vines also have this resealable packaging, but I, I ate most of the red vines already. I couldn't help myself. Hopefully this gave you a better understanding of what the field of food science is and what a food scientist does. If you have any other questions about food science or any ideas for future videos, please leave a comment below. If you've made it this far, please give the video a thumbs up. Please hit that red subscribe button and I will talk to you next time.